The scene opens with a smiling creature, a dog, crawling through a dim, eerie warehouse stacked high with crates. This dog is a completely new entity, and is not related to the dog we encountered in Chapter 3. It seems to share a similar origin to the small, smiling creatures that used to chase the brothers in the playcare daycare. The dog is heading towards a location where the lifeless bodies of countless other smiling creatures are scattered around. This area resembles a prison cell, complete with cell bars, and if you compare it to images shared by the developers on Steam, it seems to be the destination for the dog. The collection of toys piled together like a mountain hints that this will be central to Chapter 4. The concept of a prison has already been introduced in the game, particularly in the Shaken Project Playtime update. Unlike the tiny prison found in Chapter 3's Dog Day, this prison is immense, with its own section dedicated to the transport and tracking of prisoners, connected to an extensive network of corridors leading to various cells. After undergoing experiments, the toys are brought to this place for containment and to prevent them from causing any further trouble. We've heard plenty about Playtime Company conducting cruel experiments, but Chapter 4 is the first time we've seen where these experiments culminate. It's revealed that the reason Dog Day was drawn to this area was the scent of blood from the body of another smiling creature. Recall Dog Day's words from Chapter 3, where the dog mentioned being hung and locked away for defying the orders of Experiment 1006. The tiny smiling creatures, now under San's control, follow orders to avoid the same fate as Dog Day. They rely on the food provided by the predatory cat. However, once Sand is gone, the smiling creatures will have to fend for themselves, scavenging whatever they can find to survive, even if it means consuming the remains of their long-dead kin. After a decade, the food supply inside the factory dwindles to a critical level, and they are desperate enough to eat anything, including their own kind. The likely cause of death for these creatures is the same as the others. They disobeyed orders, refused to worship Experiment 1006, and paid the ultimate price. The thought of it is even more chilling when you realize that every one of these living toys was once a human being, possibly even children, now reduced to such a savage existence. Let's revisit the dog from the teaser, which begins devouring the corpse. Suddenly, a toy awakens and grabs the dog. It turns out to be a black sheep, another smiling creature, but entirely new, and never before seen or mentioned in Chapter 3. For reasons unknown, this particular character has been completely removed from all media releases by Playtime Company, likely to keep it hidden from the public. A similar situation occurred with the Tsinap toy, which was also withdrawn after it encountered a gas leak that could potentially traumatize children, leading Playtime to remove it from their advertisements. This suggests that whatever this sheep did must have been so alarming that Playtime was too frightened to acknowledge it, opting instead to banish it to the lowest depths of the factory. The sheep's appearance is striking with its black fur and sinister smile. What makes this one stand out, however, is the skull-shaped zipper mask, which deviates from the cheerful motifs of the other smiling critters. This design clearly indicates that this toy represents death, unlike the others, which were originally crafted with a friendly appearance before being corrupted into something malevolent. This sheep, however, seems to have been evil from the start, perhaps even serving as a bridge to a darker force. Could this be the messenger of the Experiment 1006 sheep? It feels like an extremely twisted version of the smiling creature concept. It's baffling what Playtime Company was thinking when they designed such a terrifying toy, clearly unsuitable for children. Could it be that the sheep was intended for an adult audience? Its dark, unsettling appearance mirrors its sinister personality. The sheep is far from friendly. It only pretends to be dead in order to lure the dog closer. When the dog is vulnerable, poised to pounce on its prey, the sheep doesn't hesitate. Despite the numerous toy corpses scattered around, it still craves live prey. As the camera pulls back, it reveals an unsettling sight, the bodies of countless toys piled high. This seems to be a toy graveyard, though it's unclear if these are the remains of failed experiments or if this is the den of a more dangerous predator. I doubt the sheep alone is capable of such destruction. It seems to be working for a far more dangerous entity. In the scene, you can also spot the looming silhouette of giant prison cells in the background. Clearly, whatever is being kept inside these cages is not ordinary. If a cage of this size is needed, it suggests something abnormal is being contained. Additionally, there's a cage or a door painted in three colors, green, red, and yellow. It's hard to say if the paint serves any particular purpose. Perhaps it's just for aesthetics. A painted cage would certainly be more visually appealing than one that's plain and unadorned. 
The new teaser reveals only so much. And now we move on to the images from Bobby's Steam page for playtime. Chapter 4 The first shows another central hall, but with one major difference. The sky above is artificial. This isn't the same hall from Chapter 1, and it stands apart from the rest of the playtime factory. The place looks unnervingly clean and orderly, so much so that it's hard to imagine why it hasn't fallen into disrepair. Looking around, I get the sense that someone has been here recently perhaps waiting for the main character's arrival. Whoever that is, they seem to have kept the space pristine, almost as if they were preparing to greet the main character with open arms. This area serves as the control center for all the activities happening below. It's where the darkest secrets of Playtime Company unfold, particularly behind the reinforced prison doors, which are secured with heavy iron bars. It's clear that whatever is confined here, Playtime Company is determined to prevent it from escaping. The most striking feature in this room is the coat of arms painted on the wall. If you recall, this same symbol appeared on the cage in the teaser, hinting that this may be a separate, autonomous department functioning independently from the toy factory above. Most of the employees working above are likely unaware of what's going on beneath them. On the floor, lines lead to three distinct color-coded zones, yellow, green, and red, which match the colors of the badge painted on the wall. Next, we find ourselves in a cellar, with a ventilation fan mounted in the ceiling. Rays of light shine down, illuminating a pile of bricks below. It looks as though we've stumbled upon the septic tank of the Playtime Factory, a grim discovery. At the far end of the room, there's an iron door that seems to lead out of this area. However, something tells me that escaping this room won't be as simple as it seems. This feels like a trap, and we'll need to act quickly to find a way out before we're overwhelmed by the heaps of waste. The next image depicts a parachute tunnel, resembling a drainage line that likely serves as the exit from the room we just explored. This tunnel is definitely not a place for outsiders, and we are among the few who have the chance to witness it firsthand. The wall in front has completely caved in, exposing the fact that this area is built within a dynamic underground system, similar to the cave that served as Catnap's nest in Chapter 3. Another detail in this photo is the generator at the end of the tunnel which seems to still be operational. Its usage is reminiscent of the task we had to complete in Floor 2, powering up generators to open doors while being pursued by a creature. The next photo transports us to a long corridor stained with blood. The origin of this tragedy remains unclear, but these bloodstains don't appear to come from the cells. They seem to be from the bodies of prisoners. Another toy lies piled up nearby, the remnants of a much larger collection. This must have happened after the factory's collapse as it makes little sense for Playtime Company to feed their experiments in such a grotesque manner. It seems some creature has been hunting and gathering trophies, keeping them here as its own macabre collection. This is not just a corridor soaked in blood. It's where the factory's employees' toys are captured to be consumed. Much like the overarching theme of Chapter 4, in the deepest depths of the Playtime Factory, survival is uncertain. The true terror comes from the fact that whoever resides down here wants to instill fear, knowing that fear makes the prey more appetizing. Before this place becomes the lair of that creature, we find ourselves in the prison cell of the most terrifying, deranged experiments. Just look at the thick iron door. No bomb could break through it. What's locked inside? Whatever it is, it's not as frightening as the door itself suggests. This is why we had to quarantine the area so rigorously and open the door in that specific way, because it means that the creature has broken free and is now outside. This must be the location where the playtime scientists carry out their cruel experiments, the very place where living toys are created. We then come to the final image, showing a cave passage, which is another element carried over from part two. The method to navigate through this area is still to use the purple-gray gloves, but one mistake, and you'll plummet straight into the abyss. And that's all the information we have about Poppy Playtime Chapter 4 so far. The game developers are keeping things under wraps very well, so there's still a lot we haven't been able to analyze yet. But stay tuned for the next teaser, and I'll bring you more updates.